In the Western Pacific Ocean lies an archipelago that comprises 7,107 islands. This island nation is called the Philippines, a member of ASEAN located a distance away from the Asian mainland. And yet that geographical distance has not isolated the country from the world community. Efforts to navigate the globe have led to the discovery of maritime routes. Much of the archipelago came under Spanish rule, creating the unified political structure known as the Philippines. The locals were forced into slave labor and used for transporting resources and building cities. The first Spanish settlements were spread over the archipelago. The settlements displayed the traditional grid structure and were mostly located on the coast. Over a hundred years of European colonial rule meant that self-sufficient agriculture and fishing were not primary forms of livelihood that the Filipino people relied upon. Instead, the locals adapted themselves to the industrial and technological advancements that were governing the outside world. An aspect of Filipino people heritage that has remained at the core of their identity is music and dance. This panization governed even the musical and choreographic practices, making dances take on the temper of European forms. Spanish-influenced music and dance are an ancestral art form with adaptations by way of gesture and accent over the course of history. There were also the musical trends of the 1970s that crossed the ocean from the USA to Asia. As a result of the multicultural influences in artistic expression, Filipino people exhibit a general temperament of freedom-loving artists. Their music has crossed national borders, creating memorable moments and connections between people over time. Life Songs of Ouija. The architectural heritage has earned the country the name Latin Asia. Evidence of European colonial rule can be observed in the structures that remain standing. The country's churches and chapels, stone fortifications, and old office buildings are examples of distinct styles of architecture unique to the Philippines. Established in 1572, Vigan is an example of a planned Spanish colonial town in Asia. Vigan is the capital of the province of Ilocos Sur. It's the third city that Spain built after Cebu and Intramuros. Upon being registered as a World Heritage Site in 1999, Vigan was declared a unique example of the preservation of Hispanic colonial character. This is particularly evident in Vigan's grid street pattern. The residents of Vigan have been doing their best to help preserve the city's historic qualities one such example being the use of horse-drawn carriages. Passengers are taken on a tour of Baroque-style architecture adapted into shops and hotels 
that have become part of the tourism industry. This place is the point of convergence between the Spanish, Japanese, and American colonial eras. Some archaeological discoveries are preserved at the city's museum. Vigan is one province in the in the Philippines that has still the buildings, like the leftover of, of Spanish colonization. So they tried to preserve this city and the buildings are all, all original buildings. Maybe they renovated Nitnoy, but uh, the, the, the houses are still there and, and there's a horse carriage I don't know how to say in Masale, the horse carriage. There's no no cars. You know, they use the the horse carriage to go to places. And this is how we did during the Spanish era. Filipinos, because we were influenced by the Spanish, we are more uh, lively. <laughs> we are we have more we are more lively, we are more uh, active and we are more expressive but ties because of your culture they are more reserved more gentle and uh, more how do you call it? more gentle more respectful because it's it's in your culture and and also Filipinos, we were influenced by the Americans. So we are more, we feel, we feel more for our freedom. Following colonial rule and the authoritarian regimes, it was as though the Philippines had turned into a cursed land where the people's freedom was literally and metaphorically imprisoned. The ruling family of Ferdinand Marcos held on to power over a long period of time, and when Marcos declared martial law, the country was thrown into a frozen state. Marcos was finally ousted by the People Power Movement, which was a popular uprising of ordinary citizens. Some people, they don't like Marcos because they say he's a dictator, but he did a lot for our country and our, our economy was good. And uh, when I was in Leyte, my family were politicians, <laughs> like mayor or governor or congressman. It was my father, my brother's father, <laughs> one family. <laughs> Monopoly, there's even one road in, in Leyte. It is our family name, you know, Mate. So, but not anymore now, it's another generation. I don't remember any disaster when I was in the Philippines. Earthquake, there was a big earthquake. Usually Philippines, it's a land of earthquakes and typhoon. So when I was, when I was in, the, in the Philippines, I experienced a lot of earthquake and typhoon, but, but not the worst ones, you know, like Yolanda, my child. It happened, I was here already in, in Thailand. We meet the Mate family and Maria Elizabeth A. Mate, who tells stories from her own recollections. This is the original name of Ouija. Today, she opens her home in the Huamak district of Bangkok to welcome us and her music fans to join her on a journey of nostalgia. So I was the, I left Manila 1972 and that was the height of the martial law. I didn't experience it. I just heard from my friends a lot of shooting and uh, a lot of my friends uh, went to jail. Some events that mark the stages in one's life are hard to forget. When a chapter comes to a close, another chapter may open and push one into making important life decisions. 
Yet no matter how bad it may look at a certain point, the love for music is one avenue of escapism for those who wish to temporarily leave reality behind. And songs have the power to transport both the performer and the audience to another dimension. social studies, history, um, home economics. That time, that time we had home economics and the men go to the engineering class. So uh, we learned cooking, sewing, and doing some artwork. But we, I liked history and social studies and uh, language. Yeah, I was very good in spelling. Oh, when I was when I was in school, I played the ukulele, the small the small one, and I liked to sing with my friends, and uh, not so much in mati, in uh, how do you call it? in elementary, but in college, I mean a uh, singing group. So we were like a group, and we sang uh, uh, the mamas and the papas, sandpipers, you know, and then we entered we entered the contest. So, but not solo. We were always like a group. A lot of my friend, friends sang better than me. <laughs> better than me, so I was like a secondary singer, you know? So I'm not in the front. Chorus, chorus. Uh, chorus, chorus, you know? Because a lot of good musicians, you know? So I was, uh, if I'm nervous, nobody, <laughs> nobody will know. I, I'm on the second line. <laughs> Yeah. Ouija fell in love with a Thai gentleman who was studying in Manila at the time and decided to travel to Thailand to settle here. She also brought her companion guitar with her. She never before thought that this guitar would become a tool for her to make a living. At the time, the guitar was her most loved possession as well as her source of comfort during moments when she missed her home country and her loved ones. They say there's a tree in the forest A tree that will give you a sign Come along with me to the sweet heart tree Come and call your name next to mine. Um, when I got married with Kun Chai Wood, that was after graduation, after college. I was, I think, uh, 19 or 20, 20 years old. I brought my guitar, na? I brought my guitar here in Mung Thai. And um, I felt so lonely here because uh, it was like a culture shock. Here in Thailand, nobody spoke English. Ahan pet mak mak. And and Kun Shai Wood, when he came here, he pai lian in Nida, and Ayu Kondil in the house. So I was so lonely. I was just playing my guitar. And I was singing, somebody um, heard me walking, and he was, I think he, he worked for EMI. And he said, oh, maybe we should make a record of you, you know? So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was good because during that time there was no, nobody making record yet, no? I don't know why, and not so many Thai musicians yet, you know, so, so it was a success because it was a good idea. <laughs> In 1972, when Ouija came to build a new life in Thailand, the shops in Thai Daimalu in Ratchadamri had started to set an example for restaurants and coffee shops of that era. 
so began a trend to transform these shops into places that accommodated both food and performance, specifically the folk song style of music. And that was when Ouija recorded her first album. When I saw my Sally Bubba Bill come people in the bush, I lowered. I'm not sure if you're a VG, but I'm not sure if you're a VG. 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 นักร้องโฟกซองแทบจะเป็นคนแรกๆของเมืองไทยเลยนะฮะที่เล่นกีตาร์ด้วยแล้วร้องด้วย Yeah Don't Let Don't Know was my very first song that I learned on my guitar I didn't uh, I didn't have any teacher I didn't Usually Filipinos we 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 learn by ourselves We look and then we study But Don't Let Don't Know for me was very easy to sing because you repeat you repeat the words, Donna, Donna, and I learned how to do like this to block the guitar. So. On the wagon, bound for market, there's a calf with the Ouija's first albums were very popular, and over 500,000 copies were sold. The new and exciting selling point lay in the fact that it was a Filipina with a beautiful singing voice who also played the guitar herself and used famous songs that were easy to sing. From international songs to Thai songs, she used the popular songs of specific eras, and her Thai audience would say that her singing voice was nice and suited her well. I, I was thinking, how can I sing Pasa Thai when I cannot speak Pasa Thai, you know? I mean, I can speak, but not really very good pronunciation. So what we did was we recorded this Thai album I sang line by line, yeah, line by line, and one line stop, another line stop, and Kun Toi, he teach me, and Kun Chai Wood also, he teach me how to pronounce, so that you can have the feeling to sing the song. Kun Chai Wood will explain to me the name, the meaning of the song. Kun Chai Nak Long Thi Long Playing Achieve, yeah, na, Leung Thi La Thon, Mai Mi Ban Ha. เพราะว่ามันมันไม่ได้ว่าเราเราอัดนี่พออัดปั๊บสองท่อนหนึ่งแล้วเราเราหยุดไปถึงขนาดเบรกอะไรไม่ใช่แล้วก็อัดตรงนี้แหละมันก็จะวนเวียนอารมณ์มันจะวนเวียนอยู่ในช่วงเวลาเดียวกัน It wasn't just Weegee's singing voice that captured the hearts of her fans. Her fashion sense and long hair also inspired young Thai people and folk singers to adopt her look. เธอได้เป็นตำนานในหน้าหนึ่งของ In Thai musical history, whenever she returned to the stage, fans who grew up with Weegee's songs would always be there at her performances. แล้วบ้านเราเนี่ยเนื่องจากว่าดนตรตีที่ใช้แบบชิ้นเดียวนี่ไม่เคยมีของคุณวีจีเนี่ยก็คือเด็ดในเรื่องของเล่นกีตาร์ด้วยเราร้องเพลงไปด้วยเขาเรียกฟอกซองสมัยก่อนมี
อยู่ไม่กี่คนที่เข้ามา <coughs> อย่างคนไทยเนี่ยน้อยมากแต่ว่าพอมีก็เรียกว่าคล้ายๆฝรั่งร้องให้ฟังคือคุณวิจีนี่ก็ร้องเพลงฝรั่งได้ดีมากนะก็คือคนฟิลิปปินส์หลังจากนั้นก็มีแอคเนสชานนะแล้วก็อีกหลายท่านซึ่งก็โดดเด่นที่สุดก็มีสองท่านก็คือคุณวิจีแล้วก็แอคเนสชานเมื่อเมื่อสิบกว่าปีก่อนไปเที่ยวเมืองจีนนะก็อยู่ในร่วมกลุ่มทัวร์ด้วยกันคุณวิจีก็ชอบเที่ยวชอบถ่ายรูปก็บงังเอิญก็ตรงกันว่าชอบเที่ยวชอบถ่ายรูปนะบ้านอยู่ใกล้กันด้วยนะครับทางกลุ่มที่ไปด้วยกันเนี่ยก็มีการพบปะสังขารกันบ่อยเจอคั้นแรกนี่จําได้เลยเปล่าว่าเขาคุยกันหรออาจำไม่ได้เพราะว่าเปลี่ยนน่าจะว่าเขาเอ่ยชื่อขึ้นมาว่าแนะนําตัวว่าคุณวิจีผมก็เอ๊ะชื่อคุณคุณเลยถามเข้าไปว่าสมัยก่อนร้องเพลงใช่ไหมใช่แล้วก็ทุกครั้งเนี่ยวิร่วมเดินทางด้วยกันคุณวิจีก็จะร้องเพลงเก่าๆให้ฟังก็เป็นบรรยากาศดีดีมากเลยทําให้แฟนแฟนเฟนที่เดินทางด้วยกันได้มีโอกาสร้องเพลงร้องเพลงคลอไปด้วย Singing voice of Donna Donna from Ouija is still a source of happiness for many people in the world. She started life as a world traveler, and her live performances took place anywhere that gathered local audiences, including children, or even among groups of people who shared a common musical language. Oh, this this photo n a g a l a n d I love this place because we went to a village. And we went to a school, where all the school children were there. You know, this is this is one of the happiest moments of my of my trips when we visit the school. I like children, so so when we went near them, and I spoke English, they also spoke English because they were studying English. So. And they're fascinated if a foreigner come. <laughs> and then I, I, I told them, can they sing? And they said yes. So I taught them how to sing Dona Dona. You know, it's a very easy song. They just sing Dona 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 Dona, and here they are. And I sang, I sang the first part, and then they all sang the chorus. You know, <laughs> this is really fun. You know, we met, we met a family. In Mongolia, they live in a g a r g a r and this little girl, look, I think she hasn't taken a bath for like months. Her hair was so sticky because t i n u n m a n a u m a so they don't usually take a bath. And she's so cute and clever, so I took a lot of picture only of her. <laughs> Ouija has never fixed any expectations upon herself. Her present desire is for a compassionate and understanding family, and a profession that she loves, in which she respects the duties she has been given. She continues to seek out new experiences and to observe the diverse lifestyles of others. For Ouija, past events over the course of many years have not been about holding on to a dream. Experience has taught her to boldly confront reality, whether good or bad, and however unpredictable. And if the summer is night, I I didn't dream about it. 
it didn't, in my imagination or in my dreams, I didn't think like that. When I married Gun Shawood, I just thought like I'd be uh, a housewife here or, or because I graduated broadcasting and then I got a job as a, a radio announcer. For me, Paul I, I, I enjoyed doing, doing that, but I didn't think I would, I would sing. All the winds are laughing, they laugh with all their might. Laugh a laugh the whole day through, and half the summer's night. Dona, 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 Calves are easily bound and slaughtered, never knowing the reason.